Good morning, one and all. Welcome to the lecture on spread spectrum communication. This is a topic that comes under the course Digital Communication. I'm Sherry and Sakriya's assistant professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication at Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology. The topics covered in this presentation are as follows. We will start with an introduction to spread spectrum communication. Then we will move on to discuss what spreading codes are and how spreading codes can be used to achieve spread spectrum modulation. Spread spectrum communication is a kind of secure communication. This means that the data is transmitted in such a way that it is not detected or interrupted by an unauthorized third party. The primary advantage of spread spectrum communication is its ability to reject interference. Interference can be of two types. There can be unintentional interference by another user trying to transmit simultaneously through the same channel. Interference can also be intentional by a hostile transmitter attempting to disrupt the transmission between two users. Spread spectrum can be defined in two parts. It is a means of transmission in which the data sequence occupies a bandwidth which is much more than the minimum bandwidth required for transmission. The spectrum is spread before transmission by the use of a code which is known as a spreading code this spreading code is independent of the data sequence. At the receiver side, the same code must be used in order to despread and recover the original sequence. The significance of spread spectrum modulation is that it has several advantages. It can be used for secure communication, which means that the transmitted signal is not easily detected or recognized by unwanted listeners. It can also resist both intentional and non-intentional interference. Another advantage is that two users can share the same frequency band as each user is distinguished by the use of a unique spreading code. Spreading codes used to widen the narrowband data signal are pseudo-random in nature. That means there is a random sequence of ones and zeros. This is an important aspect in code division multiplexing. Though spread spectrum modulation was initially developed for military applications, nowadays it is widely used in multiple access communication in which a number of independent users are required to share a common channel because of the fact that the effect of multipath interference can be eliminated using spread spectrum techniques. Now coming to the drawbacks of spread spectrum modulation. In spread spectrum modulation, spreading codes transform the narrowband data signal into a noise-like wideband signal. This leads to an increase in the transmission bandwidth an increase in the system complexity as well as processing delay. Now we will look at the concept of spread spectrum using a diagram. At the transmitter side, the information signal to be transmitted is being multiplied by a spreading code which is unique to each user. This increases the bandwidth of the transmitted signal and the spread spectrum modulated signal then propagates through the channel and reaches the receiver. At the receiver, the received signal is multiplied by a spreading code. Now only the desired receiver will have an exact replica of the spreading code that was used at the transmitter side. So on multiplying the received signal with an identical spreading code, the original data can be recovered. Now this figure shows the variation of power spectral density. On modulating the information using spreading codes, 
the bandwidth of the narrow band information signal is getting widened and the power level of the transmitted signal reduces in such a way that it appears like noise so the transmitted signal can thus propagate through the channel without being detected by anyone who may be listening This figure shows the spread spectrum modulation of a given binary data sequence. So this binary data sequence has a bit duration of capital T, which is being multiplied by a spreading code. Now there are different types of spreading codes. One of the commonly used spreading codes is a pseudo random sequence or a PN sequence. So this PN sequence has a much higher frequency than the data to be transmitted. So on modulating the binary data sequence, this modulated signal is then propagates through the channel and reaches the receiver. Now an important property of spreading codes is that they have maximum self-correlation and zero cross-correlation. So that means at the receiver side, only if the despreading code is exactly identical to the code that was used at the transmitter, we will be able to recover the original data or binary sequence that was transmitted. Now we will look into the idealized model of a baseband spread spectrum system and see how modulation and detection are performed. So consider a binary data sequence and a pseudo random sequence or a PN sequence. So the information signal B of T and the spreading code C of T are the polar non-return to zero representations of the sequences in which each signal can take only two amplitude levels, either plus one or minus one. So the information signal B of T is being multiplied with the spreading code C of T in order to form the modulated signal m of t so the third figure shows the modulated signal m of t now an important property of fourier transform is that the multiplication of two signals produces a signal whose spectrum equals the convolution of the spectrum of the two component signals that is multiplication in the time domain is equivalent to convolution in the frequency domain. This means that if the message signal B of T is narrow band and the spreading code or PN signal C of T is wide band, then the product or the modulated signal M of T will have a spectrum that is nearly the same as the wide band PN signal. Okay, so that explains the role of the PN sequence how it helps in spreading the bandwidth of the transmitted signal. So now this modulated signal M of T then propagates through the channel. So as it propagates through the channel, we are going to assume that there is some additive interference. So the received signal R of T is defined as the modulated signal M of T plus the interference I of T. Now M of T is obtained by multiplying the data signal B of T with the spreading code C of T. So R of T can be defined as equal to C of T into B of T plus I of T. This block diagram shows how detection takes place at the receiver side. In order to recover the original message signal B of T, the received signal R of T is applied to a demodulator that consists of a multiplier followed by an integrator and a decision device. The multiplier is supplied with a locally generated PN sequence, which is an exact replica of the sequence used at the transmitter side. So the output of the multiplier Z of T is defined as R of T into C of T, where R of T is defined as C of T, B of T plus I of T. So we'll get the expression C square of T into B of T plus C of T into I of T. So you can see here that the data signal B of T is being multiplied twice by the PN signal 
whereas the unwanted interference is being multiplied only once. So the PN signal C of T, it takes only two amplitude values, either plus one or minus one. So when you take the square of the PN signal C square of T, its value is a constant and it remains a one for all T. So this expression Z of T reduces to B of T plus C of T into I of T, where B of T is your narrowband data signal and C of T, I of T is the interference signal, which is multiplied by the spreading code, which means the interference becomes widespread. Now, the original data signal B of T can be recovered from this by using a low pass filter. So the low pass filtering action is achieved using an integrator. So this integration is being performed over the interval zero to TB, where TB is the bit duration. The output of the integrator V is given to a decision device. The decision device compares the output of the integrator V with a threshold. Here the threshold is taken as zero. So if V, that is the output of the integrator, is greater than the threshold, we take a decision that one is the binary symbol that was transmitted. If the output of the integrator is less than the threshold zero, we take a decision that zero is the binary symbol that is transmitted. This figure shows how the detection process in spread spectrum ensures secure communication. So let B of T represent the original message signal, which is spread spectrum modulated. Let R of T represent the received signal, and this received signal reaches two users. So P1 of T represents the exact replica of the spreading code used at the transmitter side, whereas P of T, P2 of T represents a different sequence. So since P1 of T is an exact replica of the spreading code used at the transmitter side, user one will obtain the correct message signal after demodulation, whereas user two will not receive the correct sequence. So in summary, the use of a spreading code with pseudo random properties in the transmitter produces a wideband transmitted signal that appears noise like to a receiver which has no knowledge of the spreading code. Thank you.